We're uh, just about back at it, football-wise and all that. Uh, our guys right now, are, we're conditioning, and they're testing this week. So today is our last test, is squat. We're actually going to do it this evening, so we're going to call it under the lights. And they'll start at, I think, 4.35 or 6.30 and 7.30 tonight. So we'll have some lights in the weight room there, and we'll have a little fun with the squats. They've already done bench. All right, their favorite day. So they did that early in the week. They did hang cleans, and then they'll finish out with squat. So looking forward to these guys competing, which has been great in the weight room. They've competed. All right, there's been a lot of energy. You guys may have seen some videos where they're around the guys and just really pushing each other to try to excel in the weight room, their development, all right, in there and obviously on the field just as athletes. Uh, I think our strength staff and the players done a really good job. I'm hoping to see that all show up when we go practice. Um, but the guys have been great. Uh, they've been working extremely hard. I think they're all looking forward to getting out there and actually practicing and just getting back on the field. It's been a while since the bowl game for these guys that were here. Now a chance to go out there and play and a few new faces um, that came in the spring, which will be great to see those guys in action. Uh, some new roles, you guys saw that, so we'll put some things out on social media. Um, just a few new roles. We know about Keysaw and the offensive coordinator. Coach Bedell being the run game coordinator. Uh, Coach Ridd with the title of chief of staff, so really a guy that's been here, um, not just because of the longest, but understands what we've done, how we've done it, and can keep everything really in line. Uh, and has done an excellent job of that so far. Coach Miller and uh, Coach Venable, and you see Coach Venable is a co-coordinator on special teams along with Coach Alley, and Coach Alley's moving to outside linebackers, and then Coach Schmetting is moving to inside linebackers, which is the way that we wanted it originally. We just never made the change. When Avalos left, we just decided to stay with where we were. All right, when Schmetting became the defensive coordinator, we didn't want to switch positions at that time, so it was easier you know, for Zach to come in and do middle linebackers and Coach Schmetting to stay with the outside linebackers. And the way we'd like to have it set up is the D coordinator coaches the inside linebackers. And both those guys have been awesome with the change. Our players, more importantly, they've been great. And we've been doing that now for the last couple of weeks. A um, few injured players that will be out this spring. So Zeke Noah, still recovering from the knee. Um, and his wrist, which his wrist is much better now, but the knee is really the key. We've got to get him healthy. So he won't be participating. Chase Cord with a shoulder. All right, which is his throwing shoulder. All right, also just his his knee um, and a little bit of an ankle that he had cleaned up. So he's going to be out there participating, signaling and doing things because he's a great leader on this team, but not participating physically. Brandon Hawkins uh, with the shoulder, so he's going to be re he's still recovering from that, so he won't be out of practice. Uh, Evan Tyre, Danny Smith with an ankle, so he had that ankle cleaned up a little uh, a little bit, and uh, <clears throat> he won't be participating. Evan Tyler had a uh, chest injury, so he tore his pec while we were lifting, so he had surgery on that, so that's going to keep him out and limited probably through uh, maybe July and then get him back. Uh, and He's a guy that's had a few injuries and just trying to keep him healthy. He's been in great spirits, um, fantastic about his attitude always when things happen like this. And he just shows the leadership, all right, of what you hope every guy <laughs> would portray when they have things like this happen to him. So he's been fantastic. Benton Wickersham, shoulder, um, so he won't participate. And then a couple guys limited. Scaly Gahan had uh, on both kind of heel areas, a little surgery there. Uh, which has gone really well. Tiny Hopper will be limited. Uh, just got out of a boot, so just with his ankle. And then Dante Harrington still coming off the two ACL surgeries that he had. And he did a great job. Now he, he PR'd on hang clean and coming off two ACL surgeries for a guy to do that. I mean, he's a tough kid. He's got the right mindset. And we will get him back, and he will play for us. All right, once he's fully healthy. Uh, some guys that are no longer on the team, Cole Ramsayer uh, was medically retired earlier in the year um, and still continues to go to school here and is doing well. Jabari Watson, medically retired and uh, is continuing to go to school here and will finish up uh, should this semester. Um, both guys both guys have been great. Both guys are on top of their, on their stuff, uh, both great Broncos. And, 
you know, unfortunately are not able to play any longer. Some new guys coming in. I talked about it earlier. Shane Irwin, JC transfer DN, get a chance to see him. And kind of bragged on him today. I got a text message from Gabe Rosenball, our academic advisor, how well he's doing academically. All right, he's got two A's in classes right now and just a a guy that's really embraced the culture here and is doing things the right way, so I'm excited to see him on the football field. Andy Peters is here, so graduated early and is going to get a lot of reps going into this spring, so good for him, um, which, you know, the reason why to come in early as a quarterback. And so we're, we're looking forward to seeing him participate and get out there and, and see what he's all about on the practice field. Matt Greenwald, a guy from Boulder, Colorado, Fairview High School, uh, who's a wide receiver, will be out there with us as well. So we get a little more depth at that position. And, you know, the, the big thing for us right now, recruiting-wise, we still we have six spots that we have available, and we're bringing guys in, and we'll have a chance to fill those spots. So we're always recruiting. That never ends. And we're looking at guys now, looking at guys that uh, possible transfer guys, uh, still some high school players that are out there that we've been on that didn't sign. And so through this spring, we'll continue that. Through summer, we'll continue that. And there will be some opportunities for guys that, that are a part of this program that have walked on that will probably have a chance to earn some, some money and a scholarship. Um, they go out there and take care of their business. So that never ends. And then this Friday, we're having an open practice, which we've never done, which the reason behind that, thought that would be a different way. We've always had the scrimmages, but now there's an opportunity to come out and see a practice see how we do it. And this first practice, too, there's a lot of teaching. And I think for fans that want to see how we kind of put everything together, how we teach tackling, how we teach ball security, how we teach these different drills, they get a chance to see that. And our guys will be in helmets, not in shoulder pads, so there's not going to be a lot of contact in this practice, but a lot of detail, a lot of effort, a lot of technique being taught. And, you know, I look at the NFL teams and they have practices and fans come out there. I think that's really cool just to see how teams operate. And if you want to see how we transition from drill to drill or what it looks like when a coach jumps in there and starts coaching up a drill or how we transition to a team period, this is a chance to do that. Scrimmages are just get out there, warm up, and go scrimmage. And practices are completely different. So I think it's a whole new experience, whole new opportunity, a chance for fans to come out there and see what we do. And for us, too, just that motivation of getting back on the field and just having a little bit of energy. When we get out there, it's Friday night. Uh, it's one practice this week. We'll go back to practicing on Monday and kind of go back to our Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. But just the excitement. I mean, that's really what this 2020 season is all about. You know, this energy, uh, this urgency, this mindset, this culture that we're trying to establish and build. Uh, don't assume that we have it. We're still building it for this 2020 team. And I think our fans are a big part of that, seven home games and, and an opportunity here for some really big things this season. So let's start it off right. Let's get the fans out there, have some fun. we got a lot of activities going on on Friday, I know, around uh, the community. But you get a chance to come out and see Boise State and watch these guys practice, meet these guys after practice, get on the blue. This is a great opportunity. And last but certainly not least, Gordy and the women's basketball team, four championships in a row. That's hard to do. That's impressive. And uh, Coach Presnell, I mean, he is, uh, he's done a fantastic job. His team's done a fantastic job. I mean, just for us, you know, football and all the athletes, all right, that are a part of this athletic program, we support each other, and that's awesome to see them go out there and have an opportunity to do that and then get it done. And we know how hard that is to do and to do it back to back to back to back. Um, it's impressive, you know, it's impressive for what Gordy's done. And then our men's basketball team, 3 o'clock today, right? They play UNLV again, and my prediction is we win. All right? Bottom line. So Leon will have them ready to go. Those guys will be geared up. I know they played them last time and didn't win. We were in that same boat. We played Fresno State. We lost. Go back and play them in the championship game, found a way to win. I think our team will do the same thing. And, you know, it's just it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch our other teams and sports go out there and compete and compete at a high level. So proud of those guys, and certainly our guys are fired up for them as well. So with that, open up for questions. Real quick, when you, I mean, you, you mentioned wanting to have your defensive coordinator coach the inside linebackers. I was kind of wondering what the 
why, why that's important for you, and then also um, with Zach and Winston doing the, the special team stuff, what made them a fit there? Yeah, well, just I think structurally the way you set up, in my opinion, the defense, you know, if your coordinator can be at the middle linebacker position, you can get to the front, you can get to the back. So it allows you to go sit in a meeting with the defensive linemen, and you can also sit in a meeting with the safeties and corners, and you're not wasting your time, rather than trying to make it work, right? And, you know, that's how we've had it set up. That's how we originally wanted it that way. But, you know, we just didn't make that change because I thought the guys that we had and where we were, that was the best fit for the 19 season. And uh, I sat down with Coach Schmetting, sat down with Coach Alley, and really for Coach Alley, too, the responsibilities – not that our stud position, there's just a little bit less guys at that position there, and it's going to allow him to focus more on special teams. So he can spend more time on teams. He can really dive into the game plan. And, you know, he's been coaching now a year, so he's got a year under his belt. This is Winston's first year doing it. He's been around here, but, you know, Allie is really the veteran out of the two guys, if you want to call it that. And it's going to allow him to be able to spend some more time on special teams. But I think Coach Schmetting, you know, being the linebacker coach in, in one, I think that's a good fit for him. And I think uh, Coach Alley coaching the outside linebackers, that's a good fit for him. And it's going to help us on special teams. And so with Winston and Coach Alley, it felt like those two guys really bring what we're looking for to special teams. All right. Obviously, the co coaching points, um, the drills, the techniques, the schemes. All right, the leadership, the development, and then Winston, you know, also brings that energy and has played the position. He's very passionate about it. He understands it. So when he's talking to these guys, he's actually done it himself in college. He's done it in the NFL. And so he can tell these guys, you know, some things that he's learned and some techniques that he can, they can use to help them get better. And those two guys, you know, they're, they're young guys, uh, but really good coaches and detailed and they're they're passionate about this they want to do it i think they're a really good team from what i've seen so far and i hope that shows up in in what we're doing on special teams you addressed the quarterback spring quarterback situation last month um how has it evolved since then it looks like hank andy peters and, and zach matlock are the three active yep. arms in camp i'm assuming the priority will be hank what will be the role after that and what will be priorities for hank in terms of getting better yeah well that's going to be how it's set up and you know Hank is the veteran and he's new now Zach's been here as well so Zach's going to get his reps and and he's done a good job so between Hank and Zach both those guys have been in this system and he's still learning it but he, he's a smart guy and he's picking up quickly uh, I think just the progression for Hank you know the one thing that that hurt Hank was not playing you know all throughout the, the season last year and being out so he missed opportunities and reps there so we got to make some of that up but like every position on our team, how do we improve from last season, all right, with the fundamentals, which is what spring ball is about. We're going to focus on fundamentals, so how he carries the ball, his footwork, all right, how he delivers it, accuracy, all those things. Um, and then just knowledge of the offense. What are we trying to do? I think a lot of times as a young player just out there playing, you have a pretty good idea of what you're supposed to do. Now what are we trying to do? So... How can he take that next step in, all right, I know I'm supposed to read it this way, but why am I doing it? And, and get a better understanding pre-snap, make better decisions, play faster. He should play faster in spring than he did last fall. Uh, everything, just physically, mentally, all that should pick up. And we got good guys outside in the perimeter, you know, really good receivers, really good tight ends. Um, the old line is going to be the one area that we're really focused on this spring, so we're going to run the ball too. Um, and we don't have a ton of tailbacks on the roster right now, so we've got to balance that out, how many times we run it, uh, along with getting the O-line, the work that they need. But Hank's focus is really just on his improvement and doing everything better and knowing why we're doing it and playing faster. And then no different for Zach. You know, he's going to be in there doing the same thing. His is about consistency and, and going out there and operating and executing with the reps he's going to get. He'll get more reps than he's ever got. So maximize the opportunity and take advantage of those chances that you get and then go out there and make plays. And then Andy, he's going to get a ton of reps too, so he's going to get thrown it right in there and a chance to go out there and operate the offense and, and see where he's at. And I've heard really good things about him. You know, guys have been throwing on their own. And they've said really good things about Andy and how the quarterbacks right now are, are operating. So we get a chance to see that Friday night. Hey, I have a question. 
question about Octavius Evans. Uh, what does he need to do this spring to kind of grow and to help fill John Hightower's shoes on the outside? Yeah, Hank is. Yeah, Hank's healthy. Yeah, Hank right is healthy. Right yeah, he's he's good. Um, so he's been out there throwing it. So, you know, our quarterbacks don't get hit in the spring. So we're not going to you don't have to worry about those guys getting banged around a little bit. But physically, he's in the weight room. He's working out. He's been throwing. So we'll see how he looks tomorrow night when we go practice. Octavius, yeah, I mean, really, it's not about trying to be somebody else. Octavius just needs to go out there and play his game. You know, he's got to stay healthy. And I think he's had a tremendous offseason. The thing about Octavius, that guy, is a, he works. I don't know if there's anybody on this team that works harder. He works hard. He cares. He's strong. He's fast. He's powerful. He just needs to be able to go play his game. If he's just him playing his game and we're doing a good job at quarterback trying to find ways to get him the ball accurately, he's going to make plays. And Shakir is going to make plays. CT is going to make plays. I mean, we got guys that have proven themselves now that are ready to take that next step. You're losing – High tower, some explosiveness, the speed, right? There's not a lot of guys that are 4'4 out there and as tall as he is. So how do we make that up? We haven't always had guys like that. We've been able to win. So how do we make that up? We don't have a John Hightower. Well, we've got to be better in our route running. We've got to be better all right, in our decision-making with our quarterbacks and who we're going to and um, our timing and things like that. And those guys are going to be able to make the plays. And when they get the ball in their hands, they can do some really special things. So... We'll see that this spring. We'll see it from Octavius, all those guys in that wide receiver room. Coach Miller's been doing a great job. They seem excited. I think they know that they're a strength of our team right now, and there's some experience in there. So we've got to go out there and actually <clears throat> show that when we practice and be like that every single day and bring that mindset. And That should show up when we go out there and play. What was the reaction from yourself and the team when you heard about DeAndre? And how are you guys trying to make up for that? Because obviously that's a, that's a loss. Yeah. Well, it's a loss. I mean, he did a great job while he was here, and, and things change. You know, I, I don't think, um, you know, nobody was was really upset. I mean, it is what it is, right? When, when guys leave, other guys are going to have a chance to step up. And we got guys at that position, and if you're at that position and somebody in front of you leaves, all right, next man up. This is your opportunity to take advantage of it. And... Um, not in a bad way. You know, DP's a, a great player and he's, he's a great person. Um, you know, decided there's other opportunities for him. And so we got guys here that will step up. We got some young guys coming in. They're going to have to be ready to play. So we have to develop them in the summer. And um, you know, that was really the reaction. You know, and, and, and DeAndre was great. Had a great conversation with him. He appreciated his time here. He got to play in three championship games, and unfortunately, he didn't play as much because of injuries, but we know he can play. And, you know, he was productive when he was out there, so how do we get that from someone else that hasn't played as much as him or some guys that played in that position that can continue to be consistent in those areas? Offensive, offensive line, you got a lot of work, a lot of bodies to fill. Mm -hmm. Specific question about the left tackle. Curran? Ojuku, other people, how are you going to work the left tackle position in the spring? Yeah, we'll move John over there to left tackle. And then, uh, as a starting point or as yeah, as a starting point. point. Yeah, he'll move to left tackle. So John, John's right now, I mean, he's played, he's really good. Um, he's got experience, so we're going to move him to left tackle. And then we'll, we'll kind of bounce other guys around. Garrett Curran's going to be playing right tackle, left tackle. Uh, ben Dooley is going to be playing the tackle position. Jacob Golden will be playing tackle. Nick Crabtree, um, Cole Bailey inside. You know, so we have some experience there, but uh, right now that's the plan to move him to left and then start to figure out, you know, what the rest of the line is going to look like. You got Kekani Gonzalez playing center right now, and he played some. He's got some experience in there, and Dante's not going right now, but Dante's played for us, and we know that he's a good player when he's out there, and we can develop him and get him better. But you're right. The O line, the O line's going to be the area and the D line. It's really O line and D line. We lost so many good players at those two positions this spring. We're going to have to go out there and find out by running the ball, stopping the run, pass rush. I mean, there's going to be a lot of things that are designed for the O line and D line, so we can get as much out of these 15 practices at those two positions as we can. On the, if it's you know that side of the ball because obviously he's mostly been on the right. But what, what makes you think? Yeah, just I mean I think he's one of our best guys, you know, and he's ready for that. 
You know, we had Ezra there, and, you know, Ezra was an okay player. So, <laughs> as we've seen in the combine, I mean, that guy, those guys, I'll tell you this, those guys in the combine, um, one, we're proud of them, but they did a really good job, and, and Ezra knocked it out. So, as, as you'd, ex you'd expect, I mean, that guy is uh, in practice. If you're around him, he's just a no-nonsense guy. He works hard. He loves the game, and, you know, I don't think that was too big for him whatsoever. He's just... That's what he does. He does it every single day. So, uh, but John is, you know, John deserves to move over to left tackle and play that position. And I think he's excited about it. And I think John's a guy that's a really good player. And I think is going to develop into a really great player real soon. How hard he works, his mindset, um, you know, his size. You look at him, he's got all those things, right? He's got all the tools. He's got the work ethic behind it. So I think he's going to be really good at that position. What do you think your players get out of, if anything, interacting with kind of the community after a practice tomorrow night and you know, kind of talk with people? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the big reasons why you come to Boise State, in my opinion. I mean, we, we play our season. We're busy. They have class. They have practice. they got a lot of things going on in the off season. And still through the season, we have a chance to connect. We get out in the community. Uh, I think we do a great job of that. we got guys out there. Um, in book month, Broncos versus bullying. Um, there's a lot of things our guys are doing in the community. And so I think they really enjoy the opportunity when practice is over to sit back and just share some conversations with people and just get around those that come up and support them uh, on games and, and spend some time with them, to be honest. I mean, it's just part of being here. Football, football is one part of their experience here. They always have class, but living in Boise, Idaho, I mean, we can sell that to our parents and our players. They come up here, and usually at the end of the week when they're in my office, their parents or the players, like, we met somebody. I don't know who somebody is, but they were so nice. They talked so highly of this program, yada, 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 and that might be the thing that seals the deal. Like, this is where they want to live. This is where they want to be. So, to me, that's. I enjoy it. I enjoy having fans come out in the blue. I enjoy people being around our guys. I enjoy just, you know, especially this time of year when we don't have a game that we have to focus on, that we can just go out there and just have a little bit of fun, enjoy football, and let other people come in there and be a part of it. Quick, when I asked about the safeties, one of the things that w w was interesting, obviously he played a bunch, and there's a lot of guys in that group have actually started games. Oh yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering, from, from your point of view, the the depth that you do have, and, and how that that can maybe help you kind of absorb, you know, obviously a, an important guy like that. Well, I, I think that's part of it too. We do have depth, right? And you know, when guys leave, and this is, you know, you guys know where this thing's going, right? The transfer portal and, and where it might go with the one-time transfer and and all those things. You know, I don't know what we're creating with that, but I think, you know, if you're in a position and you've got two really good players in front of you and you want to play, that might be a reason. Or get better, right? Get better and put yourself in that position. Um, and, you know, we have that at the safety position. We have that where guys have played. We have that where we trust those guys to go out there and do the things that we're asking them to do, bottom line. And they want to. That's the other part of it, too. Those guys want to play. They want to compete. I mean, J.L. Skinner. J.L. Skinner has had a heck of a spring so far. And that dude is big, and he is fast, and he is smart, and he is awesome to be around, and his numbers have gone up. So, you know, what do we do with, with him? Tyreek Jones back there. Jordan Happel. All right, when Jordan Happel's healthy, that guy can play. And so, you know, call him. You move him around. I mean, he can do anything. And so, yeah, we do have depth. We do have good players. We do have guys that, that can go fill those roles. And, you know, sometimes that plays a part of it, too, so we can absorb it. You know, and so when you lose somebody that's a really good player, you're able to go, all right, it's your time to step up. And unfortunately for, for DeAndre, those guys have already been able to play and get a lot of reps, too, because of injuries. And, you know, we did everything we could to get DeAndre back out there, and it just unfortunately didn't work out. So... And I know for him it will. You know, he will play. It would be hard to keep a guy like that off the field. But these other guys have stepped up. I'm really proud of them. And, you know, we'll see what they do in spring. And we'll see how they take these 15 practices, 
how they maximize that, what's the mindset in that room going to be. If, if we're all out there working hard and we're all out there trying to prove ourselves again, then this football team will develop and we'll be pretty good coming out of spring. And we'll have a good football team going in the summer, and then we'll figure out where we are when all the new guys come in in August, and then what we look like when we play 9-5-20. So that's really what it comes down to. What's the mindset? And so far from what I've seen with this team, they care about their performances. They care about you know, competing. They care about getting better. And you know, not a lot of entitlement, which you know, that's one thing that, that we're just not going to put up with whatsoever. And... I think our guys know that, and if somebody decides that, that they deserve something, you know, they'll be standing by me on the sideline. And I think that group has got the right mindset where it comes to going out there and competing. So when guys leave, um, you move forward, right? You move forward, you move on, and you focus on the guys we got, and that becomes the, the main thing that you know, we're trying to get done as a staff and, our, and as a team, just focus on the guys we have here. That uh, scale is limited this spring, and yeah. open share is not here yet. So obviously that opens the door for some young D tackles, mm -hmm. right? Who are some young guys in that position that, that people should keep an eye on? Well, good question, because we're going to move some guys around. You know, I mean, Scott Matlock is a guy that's going to be playing in there. Um, Jaden Ewing. You know, there's just there's going to be opportunities. I think that D line is going to look a little different. You know, with some guys moving around and and getting their shot. Isa Calamente, you know, he's had a really good spring. Um, so getting Isa back in there and, you know, a guy that's been injured. Uh, but hopefully, you know, that discontinues as we get into spring practice. Um, so there's a lot of new faces. And, and as Coach Danielson kind of pieces that all together, you know, what's that look like? Because a, a D tackle can play D end in certain fronts, vice versa. You know, our noses, like Keegan Freeborn, or Scale played, you know, that's – kind of set, you're a nose, right? You play nose. Uh, so we'll have a chance to see those guys go out there and compete at that position. But, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. How about Jackson Craven? Yeah, Jackson. Yeah, I was just uh, – yeah, Jackson, absolutely. He's he's a guy that – he came in, he was injured. And I think maybe halfway through the season got a chance to go out there and, and be on the scout team and participate a little bit. Might have been three quarters, whatever it was. But we saw him, and, and he can move. He can play. He's a guy that we recruit out of high school that we think, think very highly of. Um, I don't know, in tackle, you know, what's that all going to look like? Uh, they've talked about it, but I'll get a chance to see all that when we get out there and practice. But I know they're going to move around. I know we're going to do some different combinations, which is the same thing for the O-line. I mean, the, the line that we start off with on Friday night will not be the same on Monday. I mean, we're just going to mix it up. And we were talking about as a staff today, we're in there, and they all went on the board and put their guys kind of where they're going to start them. And then we're all looking at it and like, well, that's not how it's going to look the next practice because we're just going to move them around. And that's that's the fun part of spring, too, is kind of getting guys um, a chance to play some different positions because the reality of it is that's probably going to happen on the O-line, D-line. You're an end, but you play tackle. You're a tackle, you play end and guard and tackles. I mean, that's just... That's usually how it, we operate and how it works. A lot of basics, a lot of fundamentals, but you also know the schedule. Two first games, Georgia Southern and Air Force. Considering the elements of those two teams, how much do you pay attention to that and prepare for that in the spring? Oh, yeah, well, we pay attention to it. Yeah, you got you got two triple option teams. Um, you got Florida State. You got Marshall in there. I mean, the first four games, we went through the schedule as a team. And so right now, that's not our main focus. But it also is something that I want our guys to know what we're getting into. And uh, Georgia Southern, we know that that's a very good football team. We know Air Force and playing there. Uh, they're very good and very difficult to play um, at Falcon Stadium. So uh, those guys are aware of it. We'll spend time on it like we always do. Um, probably in the second half of spring. The first half of spring is all about us. We just got to focus on us, and it's just our offense versus our defense, all, all about our fundamentals. And then the second half of spring, we usually do one day in there a triple option. We could do two. And at some point, you know, our guys in the summertime, they're going to be working on it in fall camp. We usually spend a day on it. We'll probably have to spend two or three days on it. And, you know, that's just the reality. But all that takes away from your time with the other teams you're preparing for, the first four games, right? So, um, People have asked, like, is that a good thing to play two triple option teams back to back? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I really look at it. I mean, we got Georgia Southern 
and and that's going to be our focus. All right, they're going to be here. We get to open up at home. Um, it was uh, Troy, the last time we had a chance to do that, so it's been a while, and you know that's what our guys are going to be focused on. And and they're well aware of the second game too, division game, good team, seen them every year. We know who they are, so. Um, that's got the guy's attention for sure, but we're we're going to spend more time on it than we have. I think I wrote. I think I wrote like it could be a good or bad thing. You know, I mean, the experience of playing the option two weeks in a row, sure, but also the fact that if you play an option team, you're probably a little sore. So, could be. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. I, you don't. You just don't know yeah. until you do it. I don't disagree. I mean, you you know what you're. You know, the the way they run it, the fullback, the dive. Um, you know, they're going to cut. That's all part of the game. So. I have no I mean this we're going to find out right what what is it like to play two option teams back to back I'm not sure who does that other than us but we got it so probably yeah I'm not uh, going to have to call somebody and ask them <laughs> the uh but I want to ask you real quick about corner. Um, I, toward the end of the year, I'm not sure if that was just a perception. It looked like Avery maybe ha- had some tough games, and obviously someone like Markel Reed's in that group. But I was wondering what you see from those guys. And a guy like Markel, who obviously plays a true freshman, mm-hmm. how you can try to mix him in a little bit more this season. Well, he, yeah, he's he's got to get in the mix. Um, I don't know if tough games. We get challenged. I think in in our conference they're really good wide receivers, and I think the quarterbacks played really well this season. Most of them that we played against, um, but those guys are the corner position's so different. I never played it, all right. But as I as I study it and I sit in those meetings, uh, it's not like you can even show up to a practice and just be off a little bit. Like you have to be on. You're always on because. Everybody sees you in that one-on-one situation with the wide receiver. And if you're not playing well, that dude's wide open and making plays. And that's a bad thing for the defense. So, you know, just the the mentality of the corner position, you're always on. You're always having to be focused, in my opinion. You're always having to compete. And I think you've got to have an attitude when you go out there and play. You've got to have that mindset that you're going to stop whatever's thrown at you. You've got to be a tough dude. You've got to be a disciplined dude. And... I think that room, I think we have guys in that room that can do it. I don't think we're there yet. All right, we, we have, we've got to develop that, and we've got to develop that consistency. And a guy like Marcus Evans, who's been injured, you know, we get him back. A guy like Chris Mitchell, to get him out there and play, and Chris can play. Uh, Tyreek LaBeouf, to get him out there and get him playing. He played a little bit, but he needs to play better. Markel's a young player. He's played... You know, a decent amount last year. He needs to play better. Avery, Avery's been great for us. Awesome. Great player, great teammate. He needs to play better. All right, Jalen Walker needs to play better. I mean, all these guys. And if, if they're good with that, then we're going to be good. We're going to be good in that room. If they all take that mindset. If we just think that we're good enough, we have really good teams we're playing. The first two games you mentioned, you're not going to be covering a whole lot. You're going to be tackling so you got to be tough. You're going to have to go out there and throw your body in there and tackle. And about the time you're ready to do that, you're going to have to cover. And, you know, that's that's what you're going to do. So those guys and how they train and how they practice this spring is going to be uh, huge, in my opinion. And then what they do in the summer and how they come into fall camp. And we'll have a few new guys in here. Um, Kanoe Kaniho will be in here. Um, and Donovan Clark in here as well. So, you know, we'll have some guys and uh, Jonathan Earl who's coming in who will be ready to play. And so, you know, that room will be competitive, and it needs to be. We, we feel so um, that that room is so important and that position is so important to our success on defense. I mean, we got to create that competition. And I think every guy in that room needs to know it's going to be competitive. And so that starts on Friday night. Every practice matters. Every rep matters. Every chance you get to go play that position at a high level, you need to take advantage of it.